So how far was World War II responsible for the creation of the State of Israel in 1948? We have some added information here at the bottom. Now, it's important we take note of that because we've got to use it if you want 15 marks. So you may use the following information to help you with your answer. We're going to rephrase that and we're going to say you must use the following information to help you with your answer because if you don't use it, you can't get top marks. And we have two bullet points or two scaffolding points. Um, first one is Jewish migration to Palestine, 1919 to 39, and the impact of the Second World War. Okay, there you have it. You must use those. Not you may use them. Well, you may, but you must if you want top marks. Okay, so make sure you do use them. Use. Okay then. What does the mark scheme say? It looks it constitutes a successful answer. So let's go to our success criteria to ascertain what we must do to give LXL what they want. Now we all want level four because we want to score at least 13 to 15 marks on this question. So what do LXL say they want? Well they want in general a sustained analysis and judgment to conclude. So the answer will consider the interrelationship, in other words, links between a range of aspects from the stimulus and additional material and makes a judgment on the process of change. So let's break that down. So the answer must link or show links between a range of aspects. Where do you get those aspects from? The stimulus, so those two bullet points you've been given, and additional material, so a point of your own. And you make a judgment to finish on the process of change. Now, this and here, it's not stimulus or additional material. If you want 13 to 15, you must utilize the stimulus and additional material as well as. Not either or, you need both. Stimulus points, both of them, and a point or two of your own. And then you must finish by making a judgment on how much change there was. Okay. Now, it's important you do finish with that judgment, because if we go down the mark scheme to the lower section here, if you use the stimulus material and all that good stuff, and you use links, you could still get 12, but what differentiates level 3, so 9 to 12 marks, from level 4, which is 13 to 15, the key differential there is your judgment on the process of change. So you must finish with a judgment if you want to get more than 12, because that's the key difference looking at the mark scheme. Level 3, you can consider all those stimulus points and give your own knowledge and do links, but you must conclude, and in fact have judgments throughout and change, which makes your um, grade a bit safer, to get up to level 4. So, and a judgment, that's the key difference here. All right then, so we know what the questions are going to look like, those question stems, we know what the success criteria, the mark scheme looks like. How are we going to structure that answer to ensure that we give Edexcel what they want to see on, on, a, on exam day? Right. This is how I suggest you... In fact, let's shrink that down a bit so you can see it. Apologies. Whiz over here. Right. Here's my guidance on how to structure your answer. So it's going to take about 27 minutes. That's how long I'd be looking to spend on this if I were taking the exam. Let's make this a bit bigger so we can all see. Right, there we go, nice and big. Right. That's pretty much the mark scheme. So 25 to 27 minutes. Because you're going to need to write quite a substantive quantity as well as a really good quality. So what is that going to look like in the real world? Right. What I suggest you do is you analyse bullet point one and show how it brought change. So in the case of this question, where is it here? Analyse Jewish migration to Palestine and show how it brought change. That's how I'd start my answer. So you could talk about increased migration in the 1920s after the Balfour Declaration. You could maybe talk about some of the tensions between the Jews and the Arabs, the advent of Zionism. You could then talk about um, Nazi persecution, which hots up throughout the 1930s. So show how that brought change. Then I'd do exactly the same for bullet point two which in the instance of this question, give me a second, I've lost it. Ah, I've got it back again. The impact of the Second World War. So show how that brought change. Well, it increased Jewish calls for a separate state. 
It further increased migration to Palestine, even though the British Mandate authorities tried to slow it down. Um, it also, via the Holocaust, um, caused increased international sympathy for the Zionist or, and or Jewish cause, and subsequently um, increased those international tensions, but also the impact of the Second World War made Britain, who ran the mandate in Palestine, less able to maintain those 100,000 troops that they had over there because they were pretty much bankrupt and reliant on American aid. So it made British control over Palestine weaker. It increased the international pressure on Britain to withdraw from Palestine, or at the very least allow Jewish migration to increase, because we have things like the Exodus boat, which was turned away by Britain, made look Britain look really bad on the international stage, and just generally increased the Jewish thrust, or the global thrust, for um, the creation of the State of Israel. What I would do, further to that, because you can't just do that, you need to add some own knowledge as well. I would then analyse a point of my own and show also how that brought change. Now in this case you could pick something like Jewish terrorism, you could pick maybe something like the Balfour Declaration, which all contributed in some way to some extent to the establishment of a Jewish state. And I'd use then my specific contextual knowledge to show how that was brought, up, brought about. So bullet point one from the stimulus, show how it brought change. Bullet point two, show how that brought change. Point of my own, show how that brought change. Then to make sure I get up into level four, between 13 and 15 marks, I'd give a judgment on the overall extent of change, so how much change was there overall, and or a judgment on the most significant change out of the three. So Jewish migration to Palestine in that instance, um, this impact of World War II, and then in my case, I've talked about Jewish terrorism. So which one of those was the most significant? To be clever, and to make sure Edexcel have got no choice but to put me in that level four bracket, the top marks, I would do a judgment on the extent of change and a judgment on the most significant change, just to cover all my bases. So Edexcel can't quibble. If they don't like my judgment on the extent of change, well then the odds on chance they're going to like my judgment on the most significant change of the three. That's what I'd do. So bullet point one, analyze it, show how it brought change. Same for bullet point two, I'd analyze a point of my own, show how that brought change, then give a judgment on the extent of change and the most significant. Now, quick thing, how, how do we show change? Well, I would show how the situation changed before and then after. That's a good way of looking at change. If we set up a business together and we hire an employee and we want to see how effective they've been, one way of seeing that the change they've brought about is saying, well, what, was it, what were things like before? This is how much money we made uh, in that uh, financial year before they were employed. So what change did they make? Like how, much change, how much money are we making now that they've been employed? Is it more or less? Is it positive or negative change? So looking at things before and after, or how things evolved. What became different as a result of that? Because the mark scheme makes it very, very clear, if we pop back to that quickly, what they want to see is a judgment on the process of change. Now change doesn't just click your fingers happen, it's a process, so make sure you demonstrate or exemplify how things change. And that's got to be the crux of your answer, how things change. Okay then, so we've talked about potential question stems, we've talked about the success criteria, We've talked a little bit about how I would structure a question. Let's have a look now at maybe that in action. Let's model that. So here's the question for you. How far is the Second World War responsible for the creation of the State of Israel? I'll take you through now how I would structure an answer. Now, this is by no means the best of the best sort of answer. I, I definitely not say it's not amazing, but it does exemplify, I would suggest, this us increase that so we can get a good look at it. I would suggest it does exemplify some of the features that you might want to demonstrate in your answer. Okay then, so, I've begun by talking about the first bullet point, so Jewish migration to Palestine between those years, and I've got in there from the outset, change. So, that's what the examiners want to see, caused much change, or a lot of change in the region, so good, on track. 
I've then moved on to use some evidence for that. You know in history we have to back up everything we say with precise evidence. So here I've put in 1922 the population was this much. However, by 1939 it was vastly increased. There you go. So I've given some evidence to support my assertion that there was, there was change. I've explained it a bit here by going to the ancestral birthright. Okay, this is where it gets to the nitty gritty. So rather than just saving your change until the end, I give, I would suggest you to give mini judgments on change for each factor. So I've put here, this caused significant change as it exacerbated the division between Arabs and Jews. So mini judgments throughout end with your finite overall macro judgment. So micro judgments throughout at the end of each point, so your two bullet points and your own factor. Macro end of judgment at the end. So looking good for that first bullet point because we've seen um, discussions of change, are focused on that first bullet point, nice specific contextual knowledge here, which the examiner can't argue with because it's all factually correct because I had the advantage of not doing it under exam conditions and looking at the textbook. So there, there you go. Now it's a bit long and wordy, but well, there, there, there you go. I, I, I would suggest that that is a pretty good example. So I've gone on to explain it further. Now we need to link those factors because it talks about the interrelationship of the features. So the best way to show interrelationship is always to try and explain how they're linked. How are they connected in one way or another? Now a good way of forcing yourself to do this in the exam so you don't overlook it is just use the word explicitly and obviously linked. This is linked to the changes caused by our next bullet point, Second World War. Then explain it in a sentence. So if you use that keyword links, you can't go too far wrong because you're going to force yourself to explain those links. Then I've replicated that same process for our second feature and then gone on to talk about change. The second bullet point was Second World War, so I've explained how it brought change from the outset. I've then given some examples here, Stern Gang and Ergun cause significant change as it reduced British capacity and appetite to resist Jewish demands, etc. Looking good so far, that specific contextual knowledge which the examiner can't argue with because it's a fact. So the more precise you can be with that, the better. Replicated it here with the links. So I forced myself to describe or explain or analyse that link because I've used the word link, so I've got to then do it. My third and final factor which I've used, my own point, is Jewish terrorism. So we've got things like the King David Hotel getting blown up, um, Lord Moyne being assassinated. Now my example here is quite short and shorter than the other two, so one way we could improve that would be maybe to shorten down the first two points slightly and beef up our third so they're all synchronised and you've not got a poor relation of a point so to speak. They're all about quantitatively the same sort of size and qualitatively as well. So they're good in quality and good in the sort of amount you've written. You don't want a poor relation, which that looks like to me. Naughty me. All right, then we finish off with a judgment, an overall judgment, because remember you've been given your micro judgments for each individual point. So overall the impact of the Second World War caused much change. So the extent of change, we've got a judgment there. And then, do we have the most significant judgment? In conjunction with Jewish migration, in conjunction with Jewish terrorism, played a more significant role in causing change. So I've given you a judgment there on the extent of change overall, and then to narrow it down slightly, so we've gone from macro to micro, a judge on the most significant change, or the most significant point, to make sure we're answering that question. We'll finish up by having a quick look back at the criteria. Does the answer consider the interrelationship, so the links between a range of aspects from the stimulus? Yep, I've talked about both stimulus points. Um, and additional material, so a point of my own, yep, with Jewish terrorism. And does it make a judgment on the process of change? It does that throughout and it does that at the end. So I've essentially had like multiple bites of the cherry.